Okay, we're now going to begin to talk about a, a structure, a frame of reference for marketing. This in the next several videos that will kind of break down five elements that are often considered to be the five core elements of the whole exercise of marketing. They're often referred to as the five P's of marketing, and I think you'll see why. And we'll walk through these. Number one is place, also sometimes referred to as position. This is who we are uh, as we're positioned in the, in the field. Uh, this is who our organization is that produces or stages or hosts the projects, the events, the, the uh, demonstrations, uh, the you know, art exhibitions, whatever it is we're putting forward. So place is number one. Number two is product. And of course, that's logically that which we are presenting. That's the shows, that's the exhibitions, etc. So what it is we're offering to the public. Number three is promotion. And promotion is really how we're communicating, how we're reaching out, the channels we're using. We're going to be doing a lot of talking about this because this is, of course, a big factor in the whole, in the whole thing. But this is how it is that we're reaching out and connecting. As you might expect, the fourth element is people. It's basically who we're connecting with or who we're trying to reach, who we're trying to offer this to, who is our target audience. And our fifth P is price. How much we're charging. A major factor, of course, in getting people to come in. So we have the five P's, which is place, product, promotion, people, and price. Now, you will sometimes see this referred to in different order. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. Uh, they're somewhat interchangeable. I like this sequence because I think it builds logically, and this is the sequence that we're going to follow in this course. So for the rest of this video, let me focus on place, introduce you to a little more about what place is or, or what falls within that uh, the definition that we're using here. And first, obviously, uh, our first option is to you know, have a building. It's a place. The New Orleans Museum of Art is a, is a beautiful big building in the corner of uh, City Park. There in New York, we have Carnegie Hall, a very famous concert hall. It's over 100 years old, uh, well-recognized, well-known, well-established. This is the easy place because it's, it's a place. It's a physical place. These are physical places, iconic buildings. You can't miss them. We're going to call this place as geographically located facility. There's going to be one type of, of place in the way that we're defining this. But that's not all. That's the easy one, but we have more. I move here to another example, and, and we have a great example here in New Orleans. Uh, the Southern Rep Theater is probably the oldest, most established professional theater company in the city. Uh, does excellent work, runs full seasons all year, and it has no theater. It has no building. It, it rents different uh, venues around the city with different productions. So it is. it has an identity. It has a very strong identity. People know it very well, but uh, it doesn't have a building. So in our definition of place, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm taking liberties here, but I hope you'll stay with me on this. Here is place as a producing or presenting institution that doesn't have a building without a building. All right. Number three, place as something called brand. Now, I've pulled a couple of definitions here that I think will be helpful. Uh, you've probably heard the word brand before, but let's let's see what uh, the American Marketing Association defines brand as a name term, design, symbol, or any other feature that identifies one seller's goods or service as distinct from those of other sellers. The legal term for brand is trademark. A brand may identify one item, a family of items, or all items of that seller. If used for the firm as a whole, the preferred term is trade name. And then I found a definition from a woman named Donna Antonucci on Heidi Cohen's website that I thought was was relevant to our discussion. Brand is a known entity identity of a company in terms of what products and services they offer, but also the essence of what the company stands for in terms of service and other emotional, non-tangible consumer concerns. To brand something is when a company or person makes descriptive and evocative communications, subtle and overt statements that describe what the company stands for. For example, is the brand the most economical? Does it stand for superior service? Is it an environmentally responsible provider of XYZ service or product? Each communication is deliberate in evoking emotion in the receiver to leave him or her with an essence of what the company or person stands for. 
All right, so I think that's an important definition of brand because I want you to see that brand does uh, very quickly move beyond simply an image. So here, as I, I point out on this slide, a brand is logo, but it's really more than that. It's, it often conveys something more than uh, just the particular image. Here's obviously the Walmart image, uh, well known. But you'll see they have a tagline, what's referred to as a tagline, save money, live better. Right away it's telling us something that goes beyond simply saying here's Walmart. The save money implies, hey, we're the, we're the lower cost uh, option for your shopping. Uh, you know, you can live better by spending less money with us. So that's our sort of, you, know, you can see how we're beginning to differentiate what Walmart is from, from its competition. I looked around to find an arts organization that, that told us something, and as I'll, as I'll speak about later, uh, arts organizations tend to convey who they are in slightly different ways. Uh, here I did find an opera company in Rochester, New York that did have a tagline, a professional opera in Rochester. They're sort of staking out their territory. They're saying, we are the professional opera company in the city of Rochester. So, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't uh, horn in on our territory. This is what we do. This is where the, where the you know, the, the leaders in this area, in this particular niche. Okay, so now we have places something else. We have what I call place in the field. And I'm using the word differentiating here, we, how we differentiate ourselves from the competition. So I'm just as an example, I mean, are we the hot newcomer or the established organization? Are we the presenter of classics? You know, do we do Shakespeare or do we do bold new plays that uh, you've never heard of that are very cutting edge? Uh, are we the expensive high-end option or are we lower price, more accessible? Uh, we are we sort of the Walmart version uh, in the in the arts. So what is our place defined within the framework of our competition? Now I will just say parenthetically, I know that a lot of people in the arts and cultural field don't like to even use the word competition. They like to think that there is no competition. We're all in this together, and to some degree that's true. But you still, you know, if you're running a, a museum and you're the marketing director of the museum and there's three major museums in town and people you know are going to go out to a museum you know once a month once every other month you want them to choose to come to your museum you don't want them going to the odds or the alternative so i would argue that friendly as it may be there is competition and and what is very important here as we talk about marketing is how we say to the public this is how we're different from all the others this is what sets us apart this was makes us unique in this way, we help you make your, your choices about uh, where you want to go. I just found a couple more. Now, these are, of course, commercial entities, but they're, they're images with a tagline that tell us something about how these uh, marketers feel their product fits within the, you know, within the competition. So we have bounty uh, paper towels claiming to be the quicker picker-upper. It's saying we, we're more absorbent, we pick up better than anybody else. We have Subway, which you're probably familiar with, saying basically eat fresh. We have fresh food. We have fresher food. A subtle hint is here, we have fresher food than, you know, McDonald's or whatever down the street. So that's what differentiates us. So you'll see how this can sometimes play out in quite subtle ways. Here's a marvelous historic example of uh, a less subtle way in which an organization uh, actually chose to, to take its role its position in the field and turn it to its advantage in a very aggressive marketing campaign. 1962, Avis Car Rental, which I'm sure most of you have heard about, was in search of a new advertising campaign. Since its inception, the car rental company had trailed behind the market leader Hertz. So the ad agency, Doyle Dane Birnbach in New York, uh, decided to embrace Avis's second place status as a sneaky way to tout the brand's customer service. When you're only number two, you try harder, went the new tagline, or else. The We Try Harder ads were an instant hit. Within a year, Avis went from losing $3.2 million to earning $1.2 million, the first time it had been profitable in more than a decade. From 1963 to 1966, as Hertz ignored the Avis campaign, the market share percentage gap between the two brands shrunk from 61.29 to 49.36. Terrified, Hertz executives projected that by 1968, Avis might need a new ad campaign 
because it would no longer be number two. Now, you know, this, this goes back a ways, but to me it's a, it's a very classic uh, case that, that is directly related to what we're uh, talking about here. This is a little bit like a, um, uh, if you follow politics at all, and you'll see a, you know, a politician who's running to be the mayor or the governor or the president or whatever, and he or she is going to perhaps say, we're the underdog, you know, we're the, we're the outsider, we're the, uh, the, 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 the candidate that's going to, you know, really listen to the people and we're not uh, bought and sold by, you know, the, uh, you know, being inside the Capitol building, so to speak. So in a way, that's what played out here with Avis. The implication is we're number true, we have to try harder, that means we're going to give you better deals, that means we're going to work harder, give you better service than the competition. And it worked. People were very sympathetic to the campaign, and they uh, obviously, Avis is doing very well. So that's just an example of this whole concept of differentiation and place in the field. I will say that most, as I mentioned before, most arts organizations, traditionally, you will not see slogans. You will not see, you know, subtitles that say, you know, we're the best this or the best that or the fastest or the, you know, our dancers fall down the least or whatever. There's a tendency to let that be conveyed in other ways. And part of that is by title and graphic design. So just for the fun of it here, I've looked through some designs from ballet companies. And you can see, well, of course, the color choices, the, the, the font choices, the way each of these companies has laid themselves out, but also in the titles. The Washington Ballet is the ballet company of Washington, D.C. They've kind of staked that territory. San Francisco Ballet is the, the ballet company of San Francisco. If there's other ballet companies in San Francisco, they're going to be uh, probably not considered, you know, they're going to have trouble positioning themselves against this company, which has said, we are the city's uh, ballet company, the Virginia Ballet Company, the uh, implying that they are the state ballet company, so to speak, of Virginia. And of course, American Ballet Theater, the great classic, which really purports to be, in some sense, the nation, the nation's ballet company. They are the preeminent ballet company in the nation. So as you see, one of the ways arts organizations do this is with, is with title and graphic design or in published mission statements of the organizations. And they all have mission statements in which they've laid out what their objectives are, basically why the organization exists. And we're going to come back to that because that's very important in relationship to our role as marketers, but that is the other way that, uh, in a sense, organizations brand themselves. Mission statements are often published, and they're read by the people who care, the people who want to know, you know, what? tell me a little more about this organization. So they're not as aggressive, they're not as upfront as, you know, uh, uh, Subway or, or uh, Bounty in their advertising, but they're there and they obviously work because hundreds, thousands of, of, of uh, cultural institutions kind of live by these rules. So let's just wrap up here on uh, a little bit on place uh, or position, which is who we are. And we've kind of broken out four different, uh, if you will, subcategories. And some of them begin to in cross over a little bit. The obvious easy one is the geographically located buildings. We got that. That was the New Orleans Museum of Art. That was Carnegie Hall. They don't move. They have their own identity. They are who they are. Then we had a producer presenter who didn't have a building but had an identity, so in a sense had a place. Certainly Southern Rep Theatre Company has a place in the city of New Orleans, there's no question about it. We talked about brand. Brand is, a, is something that the organization can actually create for itself, about itself. Uh, it usually involves a logo or an image of some nature, but it often involves more than that, with a, with a, with a slogan or with other ways in which the message is conveyed about what this organization is all about and what it, what it offers. And then we go to place in the field, which as you can see is kind of directly connected with, with brand. And place in the field is really how we differentiate amidst our competition. This is what sets us apart. This is what makes us different. Um, this is why we're unique. All right, so that's our first P. That's our place or position. And next we're going to go take a look at product.